Hi everybody, Alex and Uli here. Hi everybody, Uli and Alex here. <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm I'm nervous, Uli. To yeah, me honest. too. <laughs> it's these things that we are not allowed to talk about. There's so many things in life we're not to talk about. Like we're not to talk about menstruation, menopause. We're not to talk about when we're really feeling sick. You know, even the slightest intake of sickness, and we are not supposed to talk about you know the hidden desires or these other ways of being in a, in a relationship and this is what we're going to talk about <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about what could come up when you we talked about in another show about what it's like when you lose um the intimacy with your partner and then Uli confessed, and I am certainly that kind of person. I used to be that kind of person and look outside of the relationship. And of, and that wasn't just always looking, you know, that went um, also onto the slippery slope a lot of times for me. And it didn't make me feel good and broad, like you said in that show. Uh, it brought me to that point of like this relationship is not working anymore. And so in a more open and matured way we have arrived not at a point where we want to leave each other or where we were you know noticing something is askew with our intimacy so maybe you want to talk about this a little bit because it's also one of your desires to talk about it yeah it's a desire it's my one of my desires to talk about it because i um, have thought about it very much in the last months and felt deeply and uh, went into all my fears in the last months. Um, so I think it's a very important issue for, for most of us because uh, even in very happy relationships, I guess it happens that uh, there are still desires, uh, also sexual desires, erotic desires, fantasies for other people, even if you're in a, in a very happy and close relationship. Mm. And um, it normally or very often ends in a disaster that one is just uh, going after his desires. The other is maybe not knowing it and then confessing and then all these dramas unfold. Mm. And even very good relationships who should not end, end in this way. Yeah, and then there is, of course, that idea that you become numb, you know, and you live just a day-to-day -day life with chores and niceness or niceties, that the word doesn't make, you know, just being nice to each other. And on the other end of the stick, there is this idea of an open relationship, which is pretty scary for some of us. Others are very clear about it. And then we, you know, you... We've been asking ourselves, is this something that it would be a development between the two of us to have an open relationship, you know, and to to look into how to be with other people that we have a desire to be with in intimate, you know, what happens you know, there's this saying in German, you know, you can um you can look outside, but you eat at home, that kind of thing. You know, you can get your appetite outside, but you need to eat at home. And I think we both find it restraining. You, you When we talk about it, you mentioned that it kind of puts up a wall in you, you know, a wall of fear. Maybe you can talk a little bit more about that. Okay, there's this discussion, this ongoing discussion, which I also, also, also discussed very much in my own head like between monogamy and polyamory yeah. that are the two ends of the situation or a very uh, exclusive relationship and an open relationship and uh, one guy a friend of mine he said yeah uh, monog monogamy doesn't work but um, polyamory is also shitty so <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing and that uh, that's why i think about is there something maybe in between is there some way to to experiment because we all know uh, that a good sexuality a good sexual relationship and, and a very alive erotic relationship also requires something like adventure there has to be a little bit of tension and there has to be a little bit of new things and so how can one integrate that 
into a very good relationship which is on on one hand still like this uh, there's still like this monogamy which i which i like very much but on the other hand there is also an opening to it in the form how can you allow other people to to take part in this relationship what you have also with touch also in the form of your body mm. what is possible there Mm. And I had, um, as this subject came up between us maybe half a year ago, I immediately built my walls and I made my constructions and to defend very serious monogamy and sexual absolute exclusiveness. And to be honest, I did this for some months and it made me absolutely not happy. Mm. I was very, mm. very, I felt getting hard I felt getting harder and harder in my arguments and I argumented very nicely for myself and built my constructions but it was not something that made me happy and just um, for some months ago I think I could I could be more open to these ideas and could relax into them and I just feel much better now I must feel mm. much more happy now and this is what I want to do and Happiness is a state of mind. Yeah, 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 state of mind. <laughs> <laughs> and I, th I think, um, dear listener, if you were under the impression, you know, like we have opened up into an open relationship, we haven't. And I mean, mm. we're married, you know, like we made this commitment because when we met each other, we wanted to be exclusive. We wanted to spend time with each other, you know, and not be a an efficient couple we wanted to be a supportive couple and we i mean i couldn't look outside of who i'm with and to be honest that's still the same for me but then there is i think what we're trying to describe here is that we've been starting to walk the path of the red tantra and in red tantra you also you know like you play with the space around you there's different practices and one of the practices is the massage practice or which they call the yoga of touch and the yoga of touch is an in-between thing at least for me who i experienced it um an in-between thing where you are actually feeling this ecstatic and elated state of being without thoughts through somebody kind of treating you as a loving human being and it's not about you, me having breasts or, you know, like to have a yoni and all this, but it's about like being seen as a whole and noticing my body, you know, like as an expression of the divine. And so, <clears throat> of course, Uli can give that to me as well. You know, he could just show me my body and but in this interplay of maybe bringing somebody else in, it was almost that sense of reawakening what it means to be touched. And I think that's what's happening a lot. You know, when I went in my 20s, when I had a lot of affairs, it was that sense of that I had become numb to my partner's touch, so to speak, and that another human's touch would mean so much more, Would the excitement would be there, you know, along with the narration of the excitement of... Uh, doing it behind the curtains, you know, out of sight of general public and la 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 la. Yeah. So, yeah, we, I, I think what I'm trying to say in the long way around here, we haven't found really an answer to this, but we are more open. And that's what I heard you saying, Oli, you know, we're, we're more open to not have judgment around seeing how we want to expand in which way and without taking anybody else's concern into the foreground you know what would my parents say <laughs> what, what would our daughter say that kind of thing you know that kind of stops mm. us from exploring in communication and that's the most important thing here i think we're touching upon right right i think um this it was a real, the last months were a revelation for me like I never, I never was a friend of strict rules, but here in the beginning, when this when this issue come up, I made a very strict rule for myself and for us. Mm. And then I thought, well, what are you doing here? You you make the first strict rule in your life, and you want to follow it. Why? For what is that? It's mm. not for making you feel good. It's for making you self righteous and um, at least not happy. 
And of course, we don't have an answer and we, uh, we don't have an open relationship. But we are, we are looking together how can, we, how can we a little bit open the borders, the strict borders that we have there, and uh, see what is happening then, because adventure and uh, newness is always a catalyst for mm. a better erotic relationship. And I think that's what we want in the end also for us. We want for us to have a good erotic relationship, a good mm. sex life. And if we open ourselves up to other people a little bit in this direction, very carefully and openly and um, being in contact all the time while we do this, mm. being a very open uh, exchange, then I think it can be just wonderful. And for me, as I must say, I cannot, I don't, I don't uh, see myself half a year ago. And when I see myself now, it's wow. I've changed so much and it's making me just much more mm. open and happy. <laughs> this is not possible. This is possible. Yeah. We will see. I have no mm. idea. Mm. Yeah. And I think there is different types of personalities, you know, and then uh, there's people who like to be safe. That's why they're married and that's where they kind of purchase their safe um, safety, you know, in life and safe support. But in that safety, how do you keep that, you know, network alive? It's like the couple bubble. The couple bubble is a safety net. It means like the relationship comes before your self-exploration. But in that meaning that you're still an adventure. So like if somebody is very adventurous, they might even go out and say like, I don't want to be bound to anybody because it kind of stops me in my adventure and so and i think we are we're kind of opening up the third category where we're saying like there is adventure but we can see and communicate that in a way that is safe for both you know and that's what we're really kind of trying to talk about here because nobody is talking about that a lot i mean i talk to certain women about it they are desire coaches or sexual coaches and As soon as you have that word sex on the internet, you know, all this, all these things come wafted along, you know, with like, oh, yeah, you want to fuck, you know, so, sorry, you don't fuck. <laughs> uh, and all that. And, and it's so reduced, you know, we reduce ourselves out of the to these outcomes of like, okay, if I betray my partner, you know, this has to end. Or if I betray, then you have to forgive. And but we never look into what is that, why did it come as far as to the betrayal? What was the in-between step? And that's where we're trying to catch each other <laughs> in this relationship of support, yeah. Well, I hope we could be of assistance. We're making public quite a bit of our own um, journey. And of course, we digest these parts before we break them open to you and let us know what are you traveling? What's your kind of experience on this path? And yeah, if you want to engage with us, we offer a retreat for couples and to maybe come to more consensus of what kind of type of relationship couple you are. What do you need in your relationship? You know, it's not about following us all the way through. It's about finding out what keeps your passion going, what keeps you safe <laughs> in your relationship, you know, why you feel passionate. So, so travel safe and at the same time adventurous. See you soon. See you soon. Thank you for listening. Thank you.